Hey, muchachos and muchachas, it's good to be back with you. This is another in a series of videos about statics, and today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about internal forces and moments, particularly when you've got a uniform distributed load. Now, if you're a fan of the channel, you might notice that this is actually the, my second try at this. The first video I posted yesterday had, number one, an error in it, and I burped in the middle of it and forgot to edit that out. So the, the video was pretty much a disaster all the way around. I've deleted the video and we're going to just try this again. Sorry, I'm human. The other thing that's going on right now is there's a construction project right outside my window. They're tearing down a building about, oh, 100 feet from my window. If there's a little background noise, that's all that's going on. All right, with that out of the way, let's get started. So here's what we've got. I've got a, a four meter beam with a thousand newton meter, newtons per meter distributed load, uniform distributed load across it. So I want to do two things. We're going to draw the load shear moment diagram, but we're also going to show that we can calculate internal forces and moments by making fictitious cuts across the beam, and that the number we get making our fictitious cut matches the load shear moment diagram. When you make a fictitious cut, what you're doing is you're figuring out the internal forces on the beam, the, beam, the forces that the beam feels as a result of forces from the outside. So that's what's going on. So let's get started. Well, remember the uh, recipe for solving statics problems? Remember it's got four mandatory steps and one optional one. The first mandatory step is you have to have a working diagram. Well, that's it. When you're doing problems in school, the, the problem statement is usually the working diagram. After you graduate and you're working in your job, it's up to you to do the working diagram. Step two is to turn this or replace this with a free body diagram. We're going to cut the structure free of its supports right there and there. And we're going to replace those supports with the effect they had on the beam, which is the forces or moments they impose. That's the free body diagram. Third step is we're going to write out equations of static equilibrium. And four, we're going to solve for something. The fifth optional step is to enjoy a celebratory baked goods. So let's start there. I've got kind of a small board here, so rather than draw out a separate free body diagram, I'm just going to turn this into a free body diagram. So I'm going to do just what I said. I'm going to cut the supports away mathematically and I'm going to replace them with the forces that they imposed on the beam. Let's just double that up to show that that's the beam there. I think you get the idea, but there it is. Now these need names. Well, let's call this point A and point B just to give them unambiguous names. So FA is going to be the reaction force on the left side, and FB is going to... Whoops, And FB is the reaction force on the right side. So this is now almost a free body diagram, not quite. In order to be a free body diagram, it's also got to have a positive sign convention. So let's throw that up here too. There. There. Now we got a positive sign convention. Now we got a free body diagram. All right, that's step two complete. Step three, let's write out equations of static equilibrium. Now remember when you're just looking to find reaction forces or reaction moments, but the reactions at uh, the, the boundaries of your structure, you can concentrate the distributed load in one place. Right? That one place is the centroid of this shape right here. So for us, it'll be right in the center of the beam. Now the reactions don't know the difference between a concentra uh, distributed load and the equivalent correctly placed concentrated load. The beam does, but the reactions don't. So to make this simple, what we can do is we can replace our distributed load with this, and it's two meters, okay. because we have a thousand newtons per meter over four meters, and that's four thousand newtons, and it's right in the center, so it's two meters from either end. In order to find reaction forces, I can just use that. Well. We've got a symmetric structure with a loaded in the center. It's pretty clear that this is going to be uh, 2,000 newtons on either end. But let's go ahead and figure it out just the same. So we're going to sum the forces in the y direction. That's the first of our three possible uh, equations of static equilibrium. 
I'm not going to sum the forces in the x direction. There's not really much point because there's no, there are no forces in the x direction. If you want to, go ahead. You're going to find out that uh, when you, you add in the uh, horizontal reaction force there that would technically be there, it turns out to be zero. So let's go to the, the vertical forces here. I've drawn Fa positive. Go over to that. 4,000 newtons plus Fb, and that has to equal zero. Okay, so far so good. What we know now is Fa plus Fb is 4,000. There. No big surprise. The sum of those two forces has to equal the load. All right. So let's sum the moments somewhere. Now, I'm going to sum the moments about point A. Remember that your coordinate system, that's something human beings invent. Physics doesn't know or care anything about your coordinate system. It just works. So we can pick any coordinate system we want, and we can sum the moments about any point we want, but we only get to do it once. So I'm going to pick FA or point A just because the, the perpendicular distance that force turns out to be zero and that drops out. But I could pick it over here if I wanted to. It would still work. The moment due to that force right there. Well, is that positive or negative? Well, let's see here. If I put my finger there, this tries to rotate clockwise. Well, is clockwise positive or negative? Well, it goes opposite my sign convention, so it must be negative. All right, now what about this one? FB at 4 meters. Now, is that positive or negative? Well, I'll put my finger there. That's FB is trying to rotate counterclockwise, which is according to my sign convention, so there we go. Solve all this and you get FB there. Solve all that, you get FB equals 2,000 newtons and because of that other equation FA is 2,000 newtons. Okay, no problem. So that's 2,000 newtons, that's 2,000 newtons. Okay, we're in good shape so far. Now, what are we going to do next? Hmm, let's draw the load shear moment diagram. This one is particularly easy. So I'm going to erase the, the, this part of the board and I'll draw the load shear moment diagram over there. Okay, here's the load part, no problem. I've got my 2,000 newtons up there, 2,000 newtons there, and then my minus 1,000, uh, or my 1,000 newton per meter downward load there. So there's the load part. Well, the shear part, let's just do exactly what the diagram tells us to do. We'll start on this end and work to the left. Okay. So right there, I'm going to go up 2,000 newtons. start at zero there, and I'm going to go down at the rate of a slope of 1,000 newtons per meter. Because I'm integrating to go from here to here, that, that means the height there equals the slope there. Well, the, the height is minus 1,000 newtons per meter. Let me just put the negative sign in there. And I go from plus 2,000 to minus 2,000. There's zero there again. I'm going to move this down a little bit. There we go. So it's load, shear. Now I've got to do the moment. Well, the moment at the, at the end is zero because it's a pinned boundary condition, and the same thing on the other end here. So all I've got to do now is I've got to make a, a shape that starts with a big positive slope, goes to zero at the middle, and goes to a big negative slope at the end. All right. Well, that would be a parabola, all right? And just to... Uh, To make this more clear, let's write out the equation for this line and integrate it to see what we get here. Well, the shear is 2,000 minus 1,000 x, because there's the slope right there. Well, if I integrate that, that means the moment must be 2,000 x minus 500 x squared. That's going to be the shape of that, that uh, curve right there. 
So let's try something else here. Let's make a fictitious cut on this free body diagram right here and show that the forces we get right at the cut and the moments are the same ones we get on this right here. And I'm going to leave this up. We're going to need a place to make that fictitious cut. So I'll tell you what, let's just make it at one meter in from the end. I'm going to delete some of this stuff, erase it here. And let's make a fictitious cut right there at one meter. All right, so far so good. Well, I'm going to need to erase this now. I'm going to uh, redraw it with just that part of the uh, free body diagram because that's the only part we need. We're going to make a cut there and we're going to figure out the shear and the moment right there. Okay, before we go further, let's clear up two things. Number one, I'm going to need some space here, so let's figure out what the shear and the moment are at one meter. All right, so shear at one meter. Is it plug one meter into that equation, you get a thousand newtons. And the other, the moment, one. Okay, plug one into that equation, and uh, you get fifteen hundred newton meters. So, so far, so good. Now, I'm going to erase this. I've got to draw one other thing here. Now, the other thing we're going to need to know is the designer's sign convention. It's also called the beam sign convention. And this is what governs load shear moment diagrams. You can't get the signs to work out unless we agree on a sign convention. Now, the sign convention we used when we figure out this uh, problem was this. And that's for our coordinate system, and it's absolutely fine. But in order to get a load shear moment diagram to work out, to get the signs correct, we have to use the designer sign convention or the beam sign convention. Now, in some of the other videos, I've said that this is positive curvature, and this is negative curvature, and it is. What I mean is this. I've got a little beam here. It's a little piece of balsa wood, but a little beam. Okay, that's positive curvature. This is negative curvature. But there's a second part to this. The designer sign convention also defines positive and negative shear. In order to get all the signs to work out, we've got to know what that is, too. So let me draw everything on the board here. Okay, so this is what the designer sign convention, also called the beam sign convention, depending on what book you're looking in. This is what shear looks like. If you're looking at a fictitious cut right here, downward on the left or upward on the right is positive shear. And if you've got a segment with some uh, shear forces on the ends, that's the definition of positive shear according to the designer sign convention. If you've got a moment, those are the positive moments, and as you can see, these are the ones that make the beam bend uh, up on the ends and down in the middle. So make sure you note this. None of the rest of this is going to work out unless we get this uh, down. And so take a screenshot, write this down in your notes, whatever you got to do. Make sure you, you have a really good understanding of this, because the bookkeeping will drive you crazy if you don't have this. Okay, now with all that, let's just go back and figure out what... M, I, and F, I are. These are the internal forces at our fictitious cut. Well, this looks pretty easy. I mean, we're going to use the same recipe. Working diagram, free body diagram, uh, equations of static equilibrium, and solve for something. Well, this is really kind of a work, uh, free body diagram now. Let's go to equations of static equilibrium. Now, let's see. Forces in the y direction are 2,000 Newtons. Uh oh, I, I can uh, concentrate this load here because I'm just trying to figure out reaction forces at the end. Let's get rid of that. Don't need that anymore. So there's my concentrated load. It's pretty easy since I have one meter and a thousand newtons per meter. So minus one thousand 
newtons plus f i, and that all has to be zero. All right, so let's solve for f i, and I get minus 1,000 newtons. Now, minus 1,000, that's plus 1,000. Well, what does our designer's sign convention say? That, I'm going to write this down here. That's negative according to designer sign convention. Well, the negative of a negative is a positive right there. So I did get that right. So let's just double check. We did get this right. The internal force at our fictitious cut does match our load shear moment diagram. All right, so let's, let's do one more here and then let's, let's, we'll be done. That's point A. Sum the moments about A, and we're going to get, it has to be zero. So there's no moment due to the 2,000 meter because there's no perpendicular distance. That distance right there is half a meter. So according to this, put your finger down, that's counterclockwise, or that's clockwise, which is negative according to that. So 0 0.5 meters times 1,000 newtons. Okay, got that taken care of. Fi is now going to be uh, acting at one meter. All right now, I'm going to, when I get to, get to that point, I'm going to plug in negative 1,000 for that. Plus mi. Now, plus here because that uh, matches my coordinates, my positive uh, sign convention on my coordinate system. Design for sign convention is what we use when we go to plot the load shear moment diagram. All right, so let's figure all this out. And then plug numbers in here. 500 newton meters minus one meter times, remember this uh, Fi, uh, I have a race now, but Fi was minus 1,000. And I'm going to get 1,500 newton meters. Well, positive 1,500 newton meters. That is what I got on my load shear moment diagram. And that's because this is positive according to the designer sign convention. So here's what we did. We wrote down a problem, did the load shear moment diagram. So far, so good. We made a fictitious cut one meter in from the end of the beam. Again, so far, so good. And calculated some numbers. And in order to make sure those, the signs on those numbers match these, we had to use the designer sign convention because the designer sign convention is what makes a load shear moment diagram work and be consistent with these calculations. All right, a little complex, but we got there. I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.